Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how I got this amazing dimensional blonde using Sally Beauty Supply Store color. And you guys know how I am about going outside of my Shazy Q. I went outside the box, guys, and I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, so I'm using a factory made wig. It has tracks in the back with a five by five in the middle and a one inch lace on the sides. So I'm gonna go in with hairspray and spray it as well as my lace jelly and I'm gonna put it under the dryer and let it dry to protect the lace when I color it. Okay, so I sectioned it off in like three or four sections. I wanna make this super easy for you guys. Okay, so I played around with some colors, and these are some of the ones that I played with. It was an ADN, an 8G, and a 7RC, because you can't actually take an 8N and just apply it alone. It would actually turn green. We're going to fill it with the 8G and the 7RC. Okay, so we're going to use a full 2 ounce of the 8N. Then we're gonna use one ounce of the 8BC. It's nice to have all the measurements on the side of the tube. Then I'm gonna use 10 milliliters of the 8G, 10 milliliters of the 7RC. Now we're gonna take our 10 volume and we're gonna use equal amounts of the 10 volume to the color. The 10 volume be less harsh on the blonde hair. Okay, so we actually did a test with the colors that I mixed and I was okay with the um, colors that I mixed up. What I did was I did a sample on a piece of lace. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes the lace will color different than track hair. Sometimes the track hair will not um, pull all the pigment in because sometimes it's blended. I'm going to go ahead and start to saturate at the root you know, hopefully this will um, ensure that the root is darker when I do apply this color. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this color all the way down, not totally to the ends. I'm going to leave some of the end blonde, but I am going to pull it down. Now you can, however, you can stop it wherever you decide, but I'm going to show you a sequence. On the first couple rows, it'll be pulled all the way down and then we'll weave the next one. You want to make sure you saturate it really well because sometimes, like I said, if you don't work it in, it won't take the color as well. Okay, guys, so you know I love these mesh papers because they're reusable, but you can go to Lowe's and get the same material and cut it up. I actually needed this to be longer because of the unit I was working with. I colored a unit. I used some color from Sally's. Okay, so on the next row, which is probably about two to three tracks again, what I'm going to do is I am going to actually uh, put the color at the root and then I'm going to weave it. So you can watch me here. I'm going to go back and forth with the same sequence all the way up to the occipital bone or the top of the uh, meaty portion of the head and then we'll start uh, the sequence over. So if you notice here, I'm actually coloring it, I'm bringing it down probably just a couple inches and then I'll start to weave it. This way I can create some dimension with the hair. If you notice, I'm kind of rubbing it in with my hands because, like I said, you have to be careful. A lot of times, the uh, track hair, especially the 613, sometimes it is blended. So you want to make sure you try to work that color in as much as possible. Now I'll start my weaving process. You can make those chunks as big as you want or as small as you want. All right, make sure that you saturate this really, really well. I'm going to apply the color throughout this entire uh, hair piece all the way down. I'm going to take it all the way down to the ends. Then I'll cover that with the mesh papers that I made and then I'll just continue going back and forth with the same pattern. 
The next one would be an actual whole piece where I've applied the color all the way down, leaving a portion of the hair at the ends blonde. And we just go back and forth. I'm going to cover that piece right there because I did the root, but I am leaving the ends so that that will be the highlighted portion. Now, this right here, guys, so that you can understand the sequence. I'm going to bring this all the way down, but I'm making sure I get the root really, really well because I do want that to be a little darker. Now, we're going to bring this whole entire piece all the way down. That's going to create the dimension. Don't forget, on this piece, in this sequence, you leave the ends only. So right here, I'm going to do the same sequence off camera. Okay, so you're going to continue that same sequence on the sides. So what I'll do is I'll match it up. Go under here, this little piece that I have braided, I'm going to match it up with what's behind it so that I'm keeping that same sequence. I'm going to do the root. I don't have to worry about the lace. I have it protected. And I'm actually going to line it up with the sides, but I kind of like to go in and hit the root first since the roots are going to be done all over the entire wig anyway. Okay, so now that I've done the roots, I want to go under here towards the back mid section, and I'm going to line it up. That is where my sequence is. That is colored all the way down, so that's where I'll start that first sequence on the sides. I'll take that color all the way down and match it up. When I go to my next section, it'll be it'll match up with the um, the back side, and everything will blend, and I'll be in my same sequence as I am in the back the size, and then we'll do the top. Okay, so I'm going to do the top the same way. I'm going to go ahead and fill in my root area. I'm going to leave a little money piece in the front. I'm not going to bring that root all the way down. I'm going to actually like do a probably like a half an inch root right there in the front. But everything else, I'll bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so the portion here in the very top, I'm going to bring that down a little bit further than I did the um, very front. 
So this probably will be about an inch to two inches here or even more. Like it's up to you how you want to do that. But this part right here, I am bringing that root out a little bit more and I'll do the entire root first because I do want that to get a little darker. Okay, so in the top portion, we wanna show a little bit more blonde. What you're gonna do on your first sequence step is you're going to bring that color halfway down, probably about six inches, four to six inches, and then you're gonna weave chunks. The chunks are going to continue on down with the color all the way to the entire end of the hair shaft. Okay, so the sequence in the top, uh, you're gonna have more blonde. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little small subsections and we're going to actually bring the color down halfway, probably about six to seven inches or so. And then we're gonna weave it. And you're gonna do that through the entire top portion of the head. That way it'll show like some highlights and some lowlights. You can actually try this uh, color sequence with any other color. Like you don't have to um, do it with just, you know, doing rooting or blondes. Like you can do this with colors and, you know, you can create your own sequence. It's just a matter of you having a plan and working that plan. So you can utilize this and I'll do it again with another color so you can see exactly what I mean. Okay, so once you're done, we're going to take it to the bowl. It looks like it's going to be dark, but it's not going to be this dark, guys. What I want to do is I want to get that color onto the ends. This will help tone out a lot of the yellow, hopefully. So I've never used this color, so we're just kind of like going with it. And I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to take the extra, mix that up with a little water and get it a little muddy and that is going to help tone it as well. You want to watch it when you do something like this guys so it don't get too too dark but this is generally how I do a lot of mine. Uh, sometimes I have to go back and add toner, sometimes I don't but for the most part let's see what happens because I've never used this. I don't know how pigmented these colors are, it's my first time. So I let it sit about five or 10 minutes. Okay, so you can see here, the color looks like it's very neutralized. I like it so far and I'm gonna shampoo it. Okay, so off camera, I blow dried it and flat ironed it and a lot of the color, when I put the heat to it, a lot of the color came off. It looks a little orange on here in some places. So I'm gonna add some toner. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to my trusty Shazy Q. I'm gonna use the 10N and the 9RB. This is my 
best combination, especially with like orangey tones and stuff like that when I'm trying to get it, you know, to the, the cool shade that I like. I'm going to put this on here and let it sit. Okay, guys, so this is the end result. So sometimes it's a matter of what, you know, your eye likes and, you know, what goes with that person's undertones as well. Okay, so I'm going to cut my lace first. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that's just my preference. I usually use zigzag scissors, but I don't have them with me today. So I'm just using my regular scissors. I'm then going to take my caramel lace tint, and I'm going to take a makeup brush, and I'm going to tint my lace. I don't usually like to do too many layers at first because I can always add more after it's on and blow dry it in, but I try to start off a little light because I don't want to make it too dark. All right, so we're going to go in with our Skin Protect. You always use Skin Protect. I actually did this application on my live. It is saved on my page, so if you want to go watch it and see what we're talking about, you can go over to my live on the hair diagram. I'm using small amounts of glue, guys. I've been, you know, trying my best to get you guys to understand that the less is best and your your install is going to be even tighter. I know you guys don't believe it, but you got to try it. Do these layers really thin. The glue is going to dry really, really fast. If you feel yourself tugging on your wig, that means your wig is too small. So don't pull on it. It's going to slide back. What I'm doing, I'm just doing my uh, application, applying it, and taking my time and lining it up with the glue. I hate to have glue in front, so that's probably why I like to go ahead and cut mine ahead of time. And plus, I have the space. So now I'm going to go in with some liquid gold. This is like a super key guy. Like, you got to try this. I just put a little bit on top. You don't have to do too much. It's going to actually make the install last even longer you don't have to do a whole lot and if you apply too much you can always take a wet towel and go back and wipe it and then blow dry it so after i do this i'm going to use my blow dryer i promise you guys like if you do this one little tip right here this is like golden Okay, so I went ahead and curled it. I threw some curls in real quick, and I'm going to just comb them out. I actually added an extra video, so don't click out of here, guys. I'm about to show you guys another um, formula that I like to use using Just Shades EQ. This came out beautiful. I mean, you know, I added that extra toner on top, and it was fine. Like, I, I like it. It turned out fine. So, But here's another video clip of like something else that you can use too. okay so this one right here is a little lighter than both the the other units that i just showed you this one was done with the shades eq i have that video as well this was done i like i like how shades eq i'm just a big fan of shades eq like it goes on so smooth to me like i feel like the colors everything is blended so nice like i just I just like Shades EQ. It's the one that I like, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys some ideas and I'll still continue to work with the Sally's brand. I'll just keep playing around with the colors and just see what I like. Sometimes it is not always a matter of a formula that somebody gives you. It's the starting point of that hair color is how that hair takes the color. So it doesn't always have to Okay, so this is just one of my combinations that I like to use. I'll attach the other videos as well so that you guys can see other color combos that I do with the Shades EQ. It's always good to do like tester pieces. And like I said before, um, make sure you do it on a piece that you're going to actually use because the color may throw you off. Okay, so this is just a sped up version of the same technique I did earlier on the other hair. Um, I just didn't come down as far, so it's just a little different in that aspect. And I know you don't see me with the mesh strips. You know, if you feel like you need the mesh strips, which I think is really great, I just kind of like freehanded it here. But use the mesh strips or something just to keep it neat so you're not dripping stuff everywhere. So I just kind of wanted to uh, put these two videos together just to show you uh, a cross comparison.
and I'm doing the same thing here. I'm rinsing it out, but not totally. I'm going to use some of the remaining color, and I'm going to pour that on top. And I'm still going to save some because I want to show you guys something when it comes to the uh, actual roots. When you have protected the root, I'll let that sit a couple minutes, maybe five minutes. But here you will see where I had protected the roots, and it actually left it blonde. So what you could do is you could take some of the remaining color that's left over, and you can go ahead and put that up under and on top. And you have to watch it because you don't want the roots to go too dark. So this is, I let that sit, but watch it. Maybe probably about four to five minutes, but don't go by a time. I really want you guys to like keep your eye on it. And here is that end result. Okay, so this was the total finished look. I didn't bring that color all the way down, but like I said, you can look at the other, you know, uh, pro uh, placement video before this one and just like go by that try different things you can make up your own placement but just always have a sequence and do the same sequence that way everything is in some type of formation that's all i just wanted to show you guys on this video and just to give you you know some of my tips that i use but check out my other coloring videos as well Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below.